Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Elementary OS version 0.4 codenamed Locky. Now I can't remember exactly why I never reviewed the previous version of Elementary OS but I don't believe it ran particularly well on my system and I was rather worried about being, uh, let's say, tarred and feathered by the passionate users of this operating system. So it didn't happen. But I've taken a look at the last review I did of version 0.2. Now can I say, is this an improvement from 0.2? Barely. On the other hand, can I say, is Ubuntu 16.04 an improvement from 12.04? And for that, I will say the same thing. Barely. So let's jump in and say why I think this is barely an improvement. Well, I praised elementary OS for being fast responsive, but also having a consistent theming between the pre-installed applications. This is something I'm not noticing this time. Well, at least not on every single pre-installed application. It was all to do with this settings menu. Well, it's lacking on the system settings there. And it's also lacking on the app center. A bit more of the quality checking that is missing. Well, this says Epiphany web browser. But that is quite clearly the icon from Midori. And I'm thinking, am I going mad? I have to check this. So I checked out the user agent string and it says Epiphany. So why have we got the Midori icon? Okay, you could say, well, that's minor, isn't it, really? But this is one of my big praising points. They seem to have done a good job. And it just seems a bit of quality checking has slipped through. We've got the inconsistent theming here on videos, but then again, you could say, well, GNOME have this same inconsistent theming, so you want to have a video playing with a darker background. I've never really understood that. I've argued against it, but uh, perhaps I'm in the minority there. At least on the plus side, there have been some positive changes. I mean, taking this bar across the top of the screen, that when you have minimized windows, it is transparent. Then when you go for maximized, it darkens. Well, I guess you don't need to see your desktop when you have a maximized application. With only the two buttons in the application bar, the close and well, minimize, maximize button, it's very reminiscent of the behavior of GNOME. I couldn't seem to get a decent look in the music player this time, uh, something I didn't really have a problem with before. Like, where are all the thumbnails? Or have I just named them wrong? Clementine music player picks them up nicely. So why doesn't this? When I checked my review of Elementary OS 0.2, that feature worked fine. One feature I do like in this version is the multitasking view. So you can have multiple desktops and you can move applications between the desktops. Now, I don't really have enough applications open here, so let me just throw open a couple more applications. So let's just say calculator and scratch. Go back to this multitasking view. And you can just drag the applications between each desktop. I noticed the desktop size seems to be inconsistent here. But that's because when I booted up the operating system initially, it was on a half-sized screen. I like having that as a mouse selector option. I think before it used to be a keyboard selector. I think Windows key and S. So yeah, Windows key and S, yeah, brings up the same multitasking switcher. Good, I like that. Pressing Alt and Tab narrows down the view on the plank at the bottom of the screen to only the applications that are open. Nice, I do like that. So the deal with elementary OS is that they've built their own custom desktop and custom window manager. So we have the Pantheon desktop and the Gala window manager. As I said, it's very reminiscent of GNOME. The application searcher gives you the option of browsing between folders or starting to type and search for an application. I have to say it's nowhere near as responsive or convenient as the KDE Plasma menu, but at least it gets the job done. If I start typing to search for an application, so let's try for Calc. Why is it searching there? Hang on. Let me start over. That's better. Calculator. Yeah, okay. We've got calculator first. Now it's brought up LibreOffice Calc. So I can scroll down, choose LibreOffice Calc. Responsive enough. The presentation here of LibreOffice looks perfectly fine. Now LibreOffice is not installed by default. It is a very minimal distro. I wanted to install a few applications to see what they looked like. So we've got like VLC. 
Inkscape. Come on, Inkscape took a while to open. Notice the scroll bars there are very narrow. The file manager has a nice little extra to it, so I've been able to customise the background of the file or folder name. Just right click on it, and then I can select a different colour text background there. Although the Kaha file manager in the Mato desktop does have a slightly better feature there where it colorizes the whole icon. But okay, look, they stand out a little bit there. Navigation around the folders is still responsive enough. That tick in the top left hand corner allows you to select multiple files or folders because by default it is a single click navigation. The App Center is also the Update Manager, and there is little notification there when you have updates available. So we have one update here. So I'll go across to Updates, and there it is. So sometimes there are screenshots available. So yeah, just go to Update. Uh, we do need to authenticate. Looking at the installation of applications, we can see it split out into various categories, but I can also search for an application here in the top right hand side. Let's try audio, Audacity. So we have a screenshot of the app and a bit of information about it. But it seems to lack reviews. But that's a feature that both Mint and the GNOME software center have. And installation is simple enough. We just select the application and install it. Waiting for authentication. Again? Very simple installation here. We don't get any idea of how many extra packages are needed. I would imagine quite a few to drag in Clementine. So is it available to search straight away? Yes, it is. Good. Let's add the music library in. And I have album covers available. Why wouldn't the other music player show them? Right clicking on desktop does absolutely nothing. To change the background wallpaper, we have to navigate across the system settings and go into desktop. We've got a few different wallpapers here. We've got a few different options for dock, like being able to set the icon size and the option of when to hide. So hide when any window overlaps the dock. Yep. Let's take a look at this parental control. This was a, a newer feature I was reading about. So you can limit access when the computer can be used. It can prevent a user from accessing certain websites. So, you know, I would rather have seen a whitelisting feature rather than a blocking feature. Well, that's my opinion though. And we can also block access to certain applications. 